Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the Galaxy Note Pro 12.2 inch. Now there's actually two Galaxy Note Pros. There's the 10.1 inch and the largest, the 12.2 inch. There's also a Galaxy Tab Pro which comes in 10.1 inch or 8.4 inch. So I will be reviewing those in separate videos. So in terms of the Note, again, it's just a uh, version of the Galaxy Tab that includes a built-in stylus, just like the Note series we've reviewed before, the Note 3 and the 10.1. But the Pro series is geared toward pro consumers or people who want to produce on their tablet instead of consume on their tablet. So it's geared toward multitasking and that sort of thing. So it has a new version of TouchWiz, which we're gonna take a look at. So this is running the latest version of Android, Android 4.4, and that new version of TouchWiz. Now in terms of specs, this is the SMP900, but there is an LTE version and a 3G version. Now the LTE version actually uses different specs. It has a Snapdragon 800 processor. This is using an octa-core Exynos processor. So if we look at the specs here, you can see the Exynos processor has a main processor clocked at 1.9 gigahertz quad core plus a 1.3 gigahertz quad core processor. We have an eight megapixel camera with auto focusing and a two megapixel secondary camera. We have GPS and GLONASS. We have three gigs of RAM. We have a 9,500 milliamp hour battery, very large battery. We have watch on, which works with the IR LED blaster like all Samsung devices have these days. Of course, we have the S Pen. And then we have full 1080p playback and recording. Now if we look at the resolution, 12.9 inches, WQXGA 2560 by 1600, so that's better than 1080p. Uh, this is a TFT LCD display. So that pixel density is good for 247. All right, so the packaging is pretty familiar. We've seen this since 2013. Basically, every Samsung device comes with this. It's environmentally friendly, uses soy ink and recyclable paper. So let's go ahead and crack the seal here to get it out of its box. I'm just gonna slice the tab. All right, so we're gonna pull this tab open. Should have a little tray here so we can pull it on. Slides right out. Yes, that is really big. All right, so let's just lift this tab freeze it from its tray, and yes, it's quite large, stands out quite a bit if you're used to 10.1 inch or smaller. So it's a large tablet, feels pretty hefty, uh, but it feels relatively lightweight for its size. Of course, we have our plastic wrapper also pointing to our S Pen stylus on the right side. And on the back, we have another wrapper also pointing to some of the features, including our micro SD card slot, S Pen, and that sort of thing. So let's go and get the wrappers off and take a look around. On the back as well, should be a tab somewhere. Now the design is nothing new for Samsung. We have this full leather back panel. This is available in white or black. I actually think black tends to look better with this faux leather. So if you look closely along the side, we have the stitching. Again, fake. It's just hard plastic. It doesn't have a soft touch to it at all. Uh, but it gives you a nicer texture to grip onto instead of a slippery plastic. Up here we have our 8 megapixel auto focusing camera with LED flash, so that's quite nice. And then uh, it's actually got a piece of plastic cover in it, so let's go and peel that off. There we go. Just above that is the IR Blaster, which works with the watch on app and a microphone. We have our volume rocker and sleep wake button. As you can see, I have also plastic surrounding the edges, so let's go and peel that off as well. Along the right side, we have our headphone jack. We have one of our speakers, so we have stereo speakers on the left hand and right hand side. Now along the right hand side, you'll find your micro SD card slot. It supports 64 gig cards. It's behind this little plastic door here, which you can pop off. There you go. This does come with 32 or 64 gigs. 32 gigs is $750, 64 gigs is $850. We also have our USB 3.0 port for faster data speeds and faster charging as well. We have one of our speakers, our right hand speaker, and our S Pen. So the S Pen, very similar to what you see with the Note 3 as well. Pops right out and hides into the silo. Now let's go ahead and take a quick look at the accessory. So we have our USB 3.0 cable. Now of course you can also charge this and sync this with a USB 2.0 cable, a micro USB cable. Then we also have our wall adapter for charging our tablet and then we have some literature. So we have our Galaxy Note Pro Quick Start Guide. It tells you about the features. Only in the Galaxy has its rewards. So if you register your device, you get some rewards from Samsung. Some instructions on how to update the software and your standard health and safety and warranty guide in multiple languages. Now we also have this 
toolkit for replacing the nibs on your S Pen. So you use this tool to pull out the nibs on your S Pen and here are the replacements. So they do wear out with heavy use. Now for the most part, this looks like a blown up version of the Note 10.1 2014 edition I reviewed. The only thing that really stands out differently are these Android controls. So you'll see down here that although they're in the same location, you can see they're orientated toward this landscape position, you'll see that we now have a recent apps button on the Note 12.2 versus the menu button on the 10.1. Uh, we still have the same back button and of course we have our home buttons. Now the design is geared toward landscape orientation and you can see that the bezels are a little thinner toward the left hand and right hand side on both of these. Uh, so you can see they're just scaled up for the size of the tablet. So they're meant to be used primarily in landscape orientation, but of course you can use it in portrait. Now of course we also have our front facing camera. This is a two megapixel camera, which is good for 1080p HD video. And of course we have our ambient light sensor. All right, so let's take a quick look at the new user experience. I've already logged into my Google account and my Samsung account. And so I can take a look at what's going on here. So we can unlock the device. You can see we get a little different animation there. Uh, you can see we have what looks like standard TouchWiz. Doesn't look like there's anything new here, but there are a few new features. For one thing, the magazine user experience is actually a home screen. It's one of the home screens. So you basically pan to the left and you get to one of the uh, layouts, which is sort of aggregating news stories. So we have news, science and technology, arts and culture, uh, sports. And we also have Samsung Watch on, which is part of the remote app that uses the IR Blaster. We have another pane here that's geared toward business users. So we have our calendar, email, we have our office suite. So we do have an office suite here uh, for opening documents. And then we have another pane here, which is geared toward news and information. But you can see there's just two of them. And otherwise it's pretty much the standard TouchWiz user experience. So you can see you can pinch in and out to see all of your home screens. And you can add new ones or you can remove them as well just by taking them up to remove. So again, pretty familiar TouchWiz stuff. Now you can also bring down your drop down shade, which has been updated slightly. So you can see the toggles are now more of a simple layout, more of a simple design. Some would say flatter. Uh, I like it better. It's a little brighter. So you can see all of your notifications down here as well. Quick access toggles. You can see that you can pan through them as well. You can go to settings to get to more controls. Let's go back down to our drop down here. And you can see the full view of all your toggles. So you can still see we have smart stay, smart pause, air view, screen mirroring, multi window mode, which we're going to talk about, which has been enhanced here. We have blocking mode, reading mode, Bluetooth, screen rotation, and pretty much the standard array of uh, toggles. We also can edit those takes us to our editor and you can see the ones that are available which are not up here. You have a limited number that you can put up here. So you have smart stay, smart pause, sync and airplane mode. So you have all of these features we're familiar with with TouchWiz. You can also see that the settings panel has been redesigned. Again, simpler design, more colorful, more uniform uh, icons. Definitely looks a lot better overall. Uh, you can see also the apps icons have been redesigned. Now you can also go to your app drawer and see plenty of apps they've included. Some of them have been downloaded like Geekbench 3 because I've restored my, from my account. So you can see an app uh, folder full of Samsung apps including Sketchbook for Galaxy and a few other things we I haven't seen before. We're going to have to explore those in my review video. And we have a standard array of Google apps as well. Uh, we have Watch On, the Watch On app, Twitter, uh, Music, My Files which is our file Navigator, which is a really nice uh, piece of software that Samsung has included. We have our gallery app again with new icons, new camera, calendar. Let's take a look at the calendar, see what they've done here again. So it looks like they removed some of that skeuomorphism, which was kind of duplicating Apple, and they've cleaned it up nicely. Now, if you look down here, you'll see we have our little slider for navigating between our panes, but you also have these little icons which indicate the presence of Magazine UX. So if you want to jump to it, all you have to do is tap on it, it takes you right to it. Now the magazine UX is very similar to Flipboard. In fact, it's powered by Flipboard. So you have your sections here, which are dedicated to certain subjects from sports to arts and culture, science and technology, and just news. You can refresh the feed up here, and then you can move between the stories like so. Or you can tap on any one of them to get you right to the full magazine viewer, and you can move between these pages just like that. And if you want to go full screen with the article, just tap on it again and turn the page. Now when you're in this magazine UX, you can tap here to get to your apps. So you can go right to your apps. 
Let's see, you want to launch Chrome. There we go. Now the other big story with the Pro Series is this multi-window mode. And as you can see, when you swipe your finger from the outside right edge, it brings up your multi-window tray. So this allows you to select apps and you can launch up to four at one time. So let me show you how that works. So again, slide in from the right and let's go ahead and open up Chrome. So basically you can drag it, let's scroll up here, drag it and launch it, all right. Let's also launch Hangouts. As you can see, it automatically splits it up for you. And then we're going to do something else. Let's do YouTube. And then let's do Gmail. So there you go. You have four windows open at the same time. And that allows you to interact with all of this at the same time. Uh, so it's very unique. In fact, this you can put more windows on a Samsung Android tablet than you can a Windows tablet. You can resize them as well just by dragging it around. You can see it's not instantaneous, but it gets the job done. So now I can watch a YouTube video in one quadrant. I can chat on Hangouts in another quadrant. I can do research on Chrome in another. And I can read my email all at the same time. And as you can see, I get a little keyboard for interacting with whatever window I'm in. So you can see it doesn't completely block uh, another one of the windows. So at least you can move it around and get it out of the way if you need to. Let's go ahead and skip that ad. What's up guys, Mike here. The there you go. Board so again, tap somewhere over here, brings up your keyboard, back and you can move it around. To see what Apple did throughout the year and what my personal top five picks Now are. as I mentioned, the menu button has been replaced with recent apps. So as you can see, we have a new interface for recent apps. This allows us to open apps. And for example, it brings up our settings. But one of the great things here with that multi-window mode is that once you've closed it, in order to get back to it, all you have to do is get back to one of the apps that was in that multi-window mode. So let's go to recent apps. Let's go to Chrome. Brings it all up again. So you don't lose it every time you minimize it. So that's kind of nice. Now when it comes time to close one of these apps, all you have to do is swipe them out of the way. Now, if we tap anywhere on the home screen, you can see that we have this editor. So we can set the wallpaper for the home screen, lock screen, or home and lock screens. We can also add apps and widgets, folders, or pages. So if you want to create a folder, you can name it here. So there you go. There is your new folder. You can see there's also a slightly different design here, and you can drag your apps up into it. Of course, we also have the S Pen, which is identical to the S Pen from the Note 10.1 2014 edition and the Note 3. So if you look at the S Pen, you'll see we got our Samsung branding along the side uh, with this sort of uh, metal finish. And we also have the button here for selecting things when you're using the S Pen. And there's our little nib, which interacts with the screen. Now, when you bring out the S Pen, you can see we get this little error command utility, again, identical to the Note 10.1 2014 edition. And actually, if it disappears like that, all I have to do is tap the button along the uh, S Pen over when you hover it over the screen and it reappears. So you can see we have Action Memo, Scrapbooker, Screen Write, S Finder, and Pen Window. These are all features I'll cover when I do my full review. But if you want to see it now, just take a look at my Note 10.1 review and it's very similar. Now taking a look at the Android controls, they've also been updated with the latest version of Android. So for example, to get to Google now, just tap and hold the home button. It takes you right there. What's the weather like tomorrow? Tomorrow's forecast for Rochester is 23 degrees with a chance of snow showers. Set an appointment for 8 p.m. tonight to finish this review. Touch to continue. So as you can see, you have full uh, integration and you also have S-Voice. So S-Voice is still here. You just double tap the home button to get to S-Voice. What's the weather like tomorrow? It'll be cold out there on Saturday with a high of 20 degrees. Don't forget your hat and scarf. Well, the voice still sounds terrible and it's still kind of slow, but there you go. S-Voice is still there if you want it, but you do have a lot of integrated actions with S-Voice. Now this tablet is geared toward productivity and professionals, so you'll see apps geared toward enterprise environments including WebEx, Remote PC, and eMeeting. We also have HandCom Viewer, which is a document viewer, so it allows you to view standard documents like PDFs, Word, Excel, and that sort of thing. Now in terms of performance, our Geekbench 3 scores are pretty solid, so we have a multi-core score of 2646, that's pretty high, and that's thanks to the octa-core processor. And then our single-core score is also really high, 915. Again, we're running Android 4.4.2 with 3 gigs of RAM and uh, our 8-core processor, so pretty impressive. This is actually almost identical to the Note 10.1 2014 edition, and that's because they're spec the same way, at least the Wi-Fi version.
Now, one of the benefits of having this large display is having a large virtual keyboard. It's almost full size, although not quite. So here I have my Apple keyboard. Don't let go of sleep here. We have my Apple keyboard, which shows you that it's still larger than this display, and the keys are still bigger, but it's actually pretty close. It's certainly more roomy than a 10-inch tablet. So the idea here is that you should be able to type more comfortably, although you still have to get used to it. I still have to look at the keys. I can't uh, just look up only at what I'm typing here. It's still something you have to get used to, and it's still kind of tight. It doesn't feel natural. And unfortunately, like most keyboards, you can't just put your fingers down on your home keys and then type normally. You still have to keep your, key, your fingers off the surface. So you still have to look at where your fingers are going most of the time. Now we still have lots of keyboard options, including the split keyboard. So this allows you to use thumb typing, and you can move it around as well. Now in terms of the camera app, it's also been visually updated, so you can see some design changes here, but most of the features are the same from something like the Note 10.1 2014 and the Note 3. So it's a really full featured camera. We have lots of modes here. Beauty face, best photo, best face, sound and shot, drama, rich tone, HDR, eraser, panorama, sports, auto, beauty face, etc, etc. Uh, we also have these auto modes up here. We have our settings up here. Again, pretty familiar stuff. Uh, and we have our video camera as well. We can turn the stabilization on or off. It looks like it's off by default. So you have lots of features in here for a uh, tablet camera. Now we also have our filters down here. And you can download filters actually from the App Store, from Samsung's App Store. Or you can edit exactly what uh, uh, filter appears here. So you can manage exactly what appears. Now what I don't see here is dual shot mode. That's the mode that allows you to record both the front facing and rear facing camera at the same time. Now just to give you some idea of the size, here we have the iPad Air 9.7 inch display. And as you can see, the iPad Air virtually fits into the display. The display of the Tab Pro is actually bigger than the entire iPad Air itself. So you can see it's a much larger tablet. Now like the Note 10.1 2014 edition, this is also a beautiful LCD IPS display. Rich colors, nice contrast, bright whites. Definitely a superb display. Looks great off access and you have really sharp text. Now, of course, you can use the tablet in landscape or portrait orientation, but it definitely feels a little awkward in portrait orientation. That's always the case with these widescreen uh, tablets. Uh, so it definitely encourages you to use it this way. All right, guys, so that is my first look at the Galaxy Note 12.1 with the new magazine user experience. I will be doing a full review, a complete feature walkthrough of this tablet. So stay tuned for that. And until then, I'll see you again in the next video.